But so Joseph wasn't his biological father, it was like his stepfather, uh, so to speak. Now, so it was that after three days, they found him, Jesus Christ, in the temple. A temple is like the Christian equivalent of church. So a temple for Jews was like what Christians call church or what uh, Muslims call mosque, you see? So he says, they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking, he's 12, he's 12. Both listening to them and asking them questions and all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So we already see the mindset of the young Jesus Christ, that his focus at that young age was to grow and to learn. He says he was, um, and all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, Mary speaking, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father, speaking of Joseph, and I have sought you anxiously. This is his passion. This is what he's driven about at 12. He's already discovered this. Verse 49. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Now, the way the English interpreted it, it makes it seem also like he, he said it disrespectfully. No, he was simply saying that um, he has, he said, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Meaning, even at the age of 12, there's something, see, while his contemporaries are bouncing around and, and making ruckus and, and doing all these things and, 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 and making uh, noise and all these things, he's at 12 years old. He has the discipline to sit down in front of the, the teachers of, of the law at that present time. And he was asking questions and answering them and they were astonished at his answering uh, and, and his understanding and his answers. And he's expressing what is driving him, what is pulling him, what is moving him to have this kind of mindset at this age. You see that? It's not random, he's not just there by accident. No, there's something that he feels, there's something that he's connected to, even at that age, that has caused him to have this revelation, that has caused him to have this demeanor about himself. At the age of 12, while his friends are, are slapping their parents around, while their friends are uh, throwing food at the table, he's sitting down at the age of 12. There's no one else around him that's his age. He says, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? He says, I must be about my father's business. So he's saying what my father's occupied with, I must also be occupied with. That's his drive. That's the passion of Jesus Christ. That's what's driving him. That's what caused him to even come into the world to save sinners. Why? Because his father's heart, above all things, is for the souls of men. Because he created mankind to be in his image, and not only to be in his image, but to share a life with them, to share a koinonia with him, to share a fellowship with him, to be in one with him. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. God desires to walk with men. And so Jesus Christ came to be and demonstrate the ministry of reconciliation, to be the medium through which the Father would connect back to his children and reconcile men back to himself. So he's saying he's devoted to this ministry. I must be about my Father's business. And I said that Jesus Christ is the perfect image of the kingdom, meaning that he's not just coming as we look at, oh, well, that's Jesus. No, no, no. Everything he did came as an instruction. He's the firstborn of many brethren, meaning he's like the firstborn child. As a father raises that firstborn, every other son and daughter takes after the firstborn. So that the parent will spend more time and the most time on the firstborn child and everyone else will follow suit. So he's like the older brother. So it's like, it's not that he's doing this to show you, well, this is me, you can do your own life. No, no, no. If you come into this kingdom, he becomes the, the perfect imprint of the essence of the father. He becomes the image, the, the, the pattern of life he becomes a pattern so that every man should have that same testimony i must be about my father's business period not my business not what i want to do that's not his mindset that's not his passion it wasn't simply about doing what he wanted to do no it was it's deeper than that he said i must be he could have easily said i must be about my own business he's 12 they wouldn't have shocked you he could have said i want to do this i want to do that but at 12 he carried this revelation i meaning it may not be you but as for me I must be about my father's business, his occupation, what he's occupied with. This is the passion of the Christ. And that every man that follows in this kingdom must have that same passion. I must be. So every man should be able to have that same confession. I must. So when people, see, so when you're, when you find your craft and you devote yourself to it, while people are calling you and say, come do this, come do that, you must have that same testimony. No, no, no. I must be about my father's business. He was even surprised. He said, why did you seek me? Why are you even coming to disturb me and trying to get me to stop doing what I'm doing now? You should already know this. Why did you seek me? You see, so why are you asking me to come to the this? Why are you asking me? No, no, no. 
Did you not know? Meaning it's something that it's a knowledge that should be open to everyone based on the way I've been living my life. Did you not know? Are you confused about? Has it not been made known to you that I, maybe not you, but I must be about my father's business? That's the passion of the Christ. Number number three, the pattern of Christ. This is our end here. Meaning the the composition of his being, the way in which he behaved himself, the way in which he patterned his life. You see, I touched on a little bit on the second point, but um, uh, meaning simply I'm saying the way he lived his life, what his, the entire combination of of the, the, the pattern, the, the, the methodology, the way in which he went about his business. We'll take that reading from Luke chapter four, uh, Luke chapter four, verses 14 to 16. Bible says, then Jesus went back to Galilee in the power of the spirit. This was after uh, 40 days of fasting and fasting is abstaining from eating. So when, if I say I'm fasting, it means that, say if I fast on Tuesday, I don't eat that whole day or I don't eat for a certain period of that day. He came back in the power of the spirit and the news about him spread throughout the entire region. And he began teaching in the synagogues and was praised and glorified and honored by all. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as was his custom. So I, I really wanted to touch um, his customs, his patterns, his, um, what's the word for it? His behavior. I guess I wanted to say his behavior, how he behaved himself in his life. He says, so he came to Nazareth where he has been brought up, meaning he was raised in Nazareth. And as was his custom or his tradition or his habit or his pattern or his way of doing things, as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath. So if he was a Christian, it would be like saying he entered church on Sunday. Sabbath was a Sunday. So it's, let's just say he's a Christian. Well, technically he wasn't a Christian because Christianity is following Christ. So he was, he was a Jew. He says so he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath. So let's just say he entered church on Sunday and he stood up to read. This was his custom. Meaning he was called, the Bible says, in, in uh, uh, the, the, the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach. Right. So his calling was to come and preach and to teach and to, and to heal and to all these things. So his entire ministry, this is how he behaved himself. So as was his custom, his tradition, his lifestyle, he entered the synagogue on Sabbath and stood up to read. Meaning, the pattern of his life, the way he behaved himself in his life, there was one thing he was devoted to, and that was exactly what the Father had called him to do. If you see Jesus and he's not preaching, you might have seen a ghost, it's not him. If you see Jesus and he's not praying, it's not him.